Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, often reviewing rare and exotic whiskies. Today I have something from James 80, single malt scotch aged eight years from the Ben Nevis distillery. Region Highlands, bottles 1301, casks number 30048 and 376948. So it was distilled on the 29th of April 2015 and it was bottled 2024. I'll get to that in a second. And it was first fill bourbon, um, hogshead, and a refill butt. Small batch, 46%. Now it's easier for a independent bottler to actually just write down the date it was um, bottled as a year. Because, um, is there, here's my date. So I can read this here. It was bottled on the 1st of March, 2024 at 12.03, no, 12.09. All right, now why? When you, bottle a, when you bottle a small batch, in this case, two casks, you have 1,301 bottles, all right? And you just bottle them and you know you're gonna have 46%. Now, you're not really sure when you're going to be on the bottling line. But you want to actually be on the bottling line with the labels at the same date. Because you don't have your own bottling line. So what you do is you know how many bottles there should be. And I'm even going to say maybe you're going to say there's 1,400 1, bottles just to be on the safe side, and 180 of these labels you never use because you're not a bottle. There's no more juice to put in those bottles, but hey, no one's going to ever see all those bottles and actually then count them. There is no legal requirement that says, as far as I'm aware, correct me if I'm wrong, is there a legal requirement that says, hey, uh, number of bottles to be 100% exact? I don't think so. I really don't. And so they can just bottle it and label it the same time at the same place because you printed the labels beforehand. Otherwise, Signature Vintage actually just bottles it, counts the bottles, and then actually prints the labels after it's been bottled and it's been in the warehouse on a pallet just waiting for those labels to be finished. Doable. Now, James Eddy, or the Eddy, is actually a independent bottler I at the moment trust a lot. What do I mean by I trust a lot? Uh, every, single, every single thing I've had from them so far has been from decent to good to very good. And that is not the case with a lot of um, bottlings I've had. Now this um, independent bottler, just go to jamesed.co.uk, goes all the way back to the great great grandfather of the CEO of uh, James Eady today, Rupert Patrick. And um, James Eady, born 1897, he actually founded, uh, 1827, can't read, he actually founded a, a brewery in um, 1854, died 1904, did a lot for brewing and a little bit for distilling. And James Eady, actually the, the great, great grandson that runs the place now, that owns, that revived the brand. Um, in 1991, after three years in the whiskey trade, he moved to Edinburgh to become a export manager for an independent whiskey, Scotch whiskey company. And he worked for um, McLeod, McLeod, I'm sorry, McLeod Distillers um, for 14 years. Uh, McLeod, Glengoyne. I think they have Rose Bank now. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, he moved to Beam Centauri. So, Lefroy in Scotland, teachers and so on. Then he moved to Diageo, where he was commercial director for Africa, managing Johnny Walker, Scotch Whiskey, and even the Guinness. All right. So, thank you very much. Um, maybe it's him that actually um, had the plan for the Guinness distilleries in Ireland producing for, for Africa. And then they, they axed that program. And now we have a great northern distillery and a Waterford distillery because Guinness had been made in Ireland, partially for Africa. I don't know. Now, Rupert is actually also the chairman of Whiskey Invest Direct. Very interesting platform. Um, 
They buy bulk whiskey, sell bulk whiskey, and you can invest your money. Ooh, the word invest. You can put your money in there and actually see it um, increase. Um, not saying you should invest there, but Whiskey Invest Direct has some good information on their site and shows a little bit of the workings there of the behind-the-scenes bulk whiskey industry. Like it. All right, so they, James Eddy, have different bottlings. They have the Trademark X, which I'm going to ignore, the Core Release, which is two things that I'm going to ignore. What I'm going to talk about, because those are the ones I've had, is actually the, um, the limited releases. So they've had some interesting releases here. Um, they've been doing this since autumn of 2018. Let's go to small batch. Has it been longer than? Oh, they've been doing it since autumn 2016. And the single casks have been around yeah, since the autumn, the fall of 2016. So eight years now they've been doing that. And if I go to their most recent spring of 2024 releases, they had an Abalaur 11 years. And that was uh, 22 months in first fill European oak Oloroso sherry butt. I have that bottle. <laughs> I will be doing a video soon. Uh, I'll risk a uh, 10 year old, which was in Mazala Hogshead. Don't have that. Ble Ethel, 12 year old, also Oloroso sherry Hogshead. Don't have that. UK exclusive. Um, Dal Yuan, 14 year old um, European uh, Malaga butt. Don't have that. Uh, Finn Glassy. They created a name for something. I don't know. Um, Del Glenn Dullin, 12 year old. That's Amatiado, Sherry Hogshead. Cool. Glenn Geary, 12 year old. Would love to try that from a Sherry Quarter Cast, UK exclusive. Inchgauer, 15 year old. Amatiado, Sherry Hogshead. Sounds interesting. Uh, Milton Duff is then a uh, Oloroso Sherry Hogshead, 16 year old. Strathmill, 12 year old. Um, European Oak Oloroso Sherry Butt. And the Tamnovulin. I'm at the moment on a little bit of a Tamnovulin trip. And also that's a first fill European oak Malaga hogshead. UK exclusive. They have two single barrels at the moment with no finish. A Blair Ethel 12 um, Richard hogshead. And a Coila 10 from a refill hogshead. And they also have a small batch. They had an Altmore 9 year old. Where they took a first fill bourbon hogshead and refill barrels. Um, put them together. And there was one, two, three, four um, barrels. And they have this, the Ben Nevis, eight-year-old, the rose in the crown. Um, this label was a painting here by Greg Colton. And that was inspired by the rose in the crown in. So um, acquired the 9th of February, 1898. So we have just two barrels here mixed together, blended, matured, married. I'm going to compare it, ding, 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 to this. You see this decanter? This decanter, actually I've done a video about this. This is whiskey base here, 243758. This costs 50 euros. This costs 60 euros. This is eight years of age. This is eight years of age. Non-chilled filtered, no color added, both 46%. Oloroso sherry butt, refill butt, and a first fill bourbon cask. Why does this cost 10 euros more? It has to do with the decanter. You're paying for glass and not for content. And that is such a shame. All right. So I'm going to pour a little bit in here and review this, and we're going to talk about these two. Now, Ben Nevis is not my favorite distillery. I've actually, I just looked. I've actually done videos here of 14 different independently bottled um, Ben Nevis products, and most of them have been, eh, okay. Very few of the Ben Nevis have been... Um, Wow, whiskey. Sometimes they're okay. Sometimes they're like, eh. Sometimes I'm not really partial to them. This, I like. This is a spirit-driven whiskey. This is a cask-driven whiskey. What do I mean by that? Cask-driven means that the wood, the cask, dominates the flavor profile of this whiskey. This, we have First fill bourbon and refill butts. Could, be, could have been refilled the fourth time. Who knows? 
Um, and this actually makes for a whiskey that the spirit itself shines and the wood flavoring, the previous cask content, port, rum, sherry, amarona, tequila, doesn't dominate the flavor at all. I like that. For me, cast driven whiskeys are often more of a spring summer type of product that I love and enjoy. And the heavier sherry, sometimes peated whiskeys are the ones that are more for the fall and the winter months. So now on the nose, think yellow palum, think a tiny little bit here of a Not perfectly ripe. Um, okay, yellow plum. Let's stick with that. Let's go over to graham cracker crust, which I can't say in German because no one knows what that is. I called it a um, a rye based bread dough. Think a tiny little bit of barley sugars. Caramelized orange peel. And a little bit of flowers like daisies. I haven't said that word for a long time. Daisies. This, on the other hand, this I get leather. This I get tobacco. This I get sherry. This I get a little bit of wood. This is dark, rich, interesting. This is lighter. This is more fragrant. This is more of a... I'm going to repeat myself again, summer whiskey. Now, the Ben Nevis Distillery will celebrate in 2025 its 200th anniversary. Uh, Nika, the parent company from Japan, is actually investing money in the visitor center to get things prepared for the celebrations that are going to happen. There are going to be more than just Ben Nevis celebrating 200 years anniversary next year, but that's going to be kind of cool. Um, according to the new German... Sorry, according to new Japanese whiskey regulations, that's a, a perfect name. Um, if you have Japanese whiskey written anywhere in the bottle, you cannot use any products outside of Japan, outside of whiskey made in Japan. So that means for me, I might be wrong, but for me, that means more and more Ben Nevis will be here for us. And there's a, at least in Germany, there's a massive fan base of people who love Ben Nevis. And for the last... Pfft, eight years basically how old the bottle is we have not been able to get the standard products try to find a ben nevis 10 try to find a ben nevis uh, mcdonald traditional try to find anything core range from ben nevis it's not impossible but it's near to impossible and therefore many of us have gone the independent bottler route and I must admit, I would love to see this, of course, for 40 euros instead of 50 euros. But I think this price is actually great. I'm going to give this a C plus for price. On the palate. I like the nose, by the way, on the palate. Mm. There's a wonderful flavor. Malted barley sugars. A little bit of a tangerine moment. It's almost sparkly. Tiny bit caramel. A lot of um, yellow and orange fruits. I said yellow plum already. I'm going to say tangerines. I'm going to repeat myself. Um, this is vanilla. This is really good. This is my wheelhouse. This would be or could be my summer whiskey. I am not normally going to reach for anything from Ben Nevis. I just bought it because of James 80. James Eady. James Eady is a brand that I trust. I've not had anything bad from them. At least I can't remember. 
And so it's like, okay, the Altmore, I'm not going to buy. Was it Altmore or was it a... So let's go over here real quick. It was the Altmore. I should have... I didn't even remember seeing the Altmore. I, we don't have Altmore anymore. Oh, wow. I need to buy an Altmore here. Find out if I can still find it someplace. Yes, it hit Germany. It was 50 euros. Why did I not buy that back then? Oh, I think I confused it with Artmore instead of Altmore. That's what I think happened here. I really do. I really do. All right. This just has the beautiful old school moment of how whiskeys that were cast driven used to be, for, for me in my opinion, and not like the new school whiskeys of cast driven flavors and aromas. Hmm. Today, last week, and even a month ago when I first opened this bottle, every single time I've nipped on this, I've been like, wow, that's good. I'm going to give it a solid B. B for flavor, C plus for value for money. I don't often do that. I don't often actually give um, C pluses for value for money. And there's not, as the first time in my life, I've given a B for a Ben Nevis. This is really, really nice. This is a little bit of a tricky whiskey. Why? There's an undertone, not just of earthiness. It's like they used, um, it's like they didn't clean out um, the pipes before pumping in the new make. And so it picked up peat. Somewhere along the line, it's not peaty enough to be peat whiskey, but somewhere along the line, there was peat involved in this. It could have been a barrel that had had peat. They put something else in it and that was not peated and absorbed the peat. And the second time they used it, it was again peat. I don't know. Um, does it say here? It says here it was um, Oloroso Sherry Butt. But there's an earthy peatiness to this, which I am not a great fan of. So, But it is a dirty, dark sherry, tobacco, leather, driven product here, which is great for wintertime whiskey drinking. There's an ashiness involved in there, which I was not express, expecting. Would I have preferred this at 50 instead of 60 because of the bottle? Yes. Would I have preferred this at 50, and, um, so 40 instead of 50? Yes, I would have, but where do we save the money here? This is good stuff. Now, I can hear some of you saying, but Jason, we used to get 16 and 18-year-old independently bottled whiskeys for that price. Well, that's 10 years ago. Maybe eight. And I'm sorry, those times are over. We don't, people don't sell whiskey with age statements 16 plus for 50 euros anymore. Every once in a while, I'll be involved in a um, barrel share. And it's like, okay, here we have a 14-year-old product. Back then, uh, we bought it eight years ago, nine years ago, and now we finally bottled it. It's like, here, 38 euros. Um, but that's before you put the 30% importer, before you put on the 30% retailer, and that's it's going to sell for 80 euros, 90 euros today. Um, but that's that. A video will be coming soon again about a cast share I did where it's like, I can't believe the price. I should have bought more back then. Whiskey Jason gives us a B, value for money, C+. Plus. First question, what is your favorite summer whiskey? Second question, which products from James Eady have you had? And any disappointment, disappointments along the way? Thank you very much for watching, liking, sharing, and telling other people about this crazy guy over here in Germany tasting whiskeys you might not never you might not ever find. One thousand three hundred and one bottles worldwide. Bye bye.